Hi guys, today we are going to be talking about choosing the best graph. And the I can statement we're working on is I can create dot plots, histograms, and box plots from data. And today we're actually going to be focusing on the from data portion. Given a set of data, can you choose the best graph and then create that graph from that data? I have given you on Blackboard, or you might have picked it up in class, a guided sheet for you to write down some work because this WSQ is actually going to go in the vocab section of your notebooks. So rather than having to write down all of this data um, or all of the information and definitions, you may want to use the sheet that I gave you. You could type it in if you'd like and save it in your math drive or you can um, print it out and put it in the vocab section of your notebooks or binders. Let's review the type of data, types of data displays we already know. Frequency tables, dot plots, histograms, box plots, line graphs, circle graphs, bar graphs, and double bar graphs. A frequency table shows how often something occurs in your notebooks or on the sheets that you were given in class or took off of Blackboard, write down in your own words the definition of a frequency table. Then write an example, and you can use the example that you see on the screen. You may need to pause the video at any time to fill in your chart. Box plots show frequency using dots or X's on a number line. Now the box plot dot plot that you see here is actually a double dot plot because it's showing the number of servings of fruit per day for two different groups of students. The 10 year olds are on top and the 11 year olds are below. Histograms find the frequency of large amounts of data in intervals. So in this case, we see the heights of players on the soccer team. Box plots, plots so show trends and distribution of data. So we might be able to figure out which quartile is the most concentrated or which set of data is the most consistent. We can also use double box plots, and actually this is not shown here. This is the mass of chicks in grams. And we can use double box plots to compare two sets of data. In this case, feed one or feed two, and which one will create the greatest mass or least smallest mass of chicks. It's also okay for a box plot to be vertical. And in this case, we're comparing females with males and their bone density. A line graph shows change over time. And that time can be in hours, minutes, seconds, years, as long as time is going on over, you know, showing a change over time. It doesn't matter what units of time you're using. A circle graph shows percents, and it has to be part of a whole. We can't compare part to part or just a small portion of a whole. Because it shows percents, all of the percents always have to add up to 100. A bar graph compares frequency of data. One thing about a bar graph that sets it off from some of the other graphs is that our data does not have to be numerical. So notice down here when we're talking about students' grades, the frequency is still represented on the y-axis or the vertical axis, but the grades that the students get 
aren't numbers. We can compare categories. Bar graphs can also be written horizontally, and it is not incorrect or misleading to do so in this way. Double bar graphs compare frequency or data of two different categories. So we're still comparing categories, tennis, swimming, canoeing, crafts, the frequency of it, but now we're comparing the girls and boys. So in this in the case with tennis, I can see how many girls participate in tennis versus how many boys participate in tennis. And I can compare not only girls to boys, but I can compare across various camp activities. Now it's your turn. Look back at the definitions you wrote and your examples. For each situation listed below, Choose the most appropriate graph for the data and explain why you made that choice. Now, for this video, your summary is your table where you've listed each graph, its definition, and your example. The work section would be numbers 1 through 12. You do not need to rewrite the um, situations or questions, but you do need to tell which graph you would choose and explain why you made that choice. When you are done, don't forget to write a question that you or someone else in the class might have about this information. Now pause the video and complete your WSQ.